Hi, a very good evening, all of you. Welcome to our final live session of this week. I hope everything is streaming fine. If you have any issues with audio or video streaming, do let me know in the comment section. Also, before we start, yeah, before we start our case-based discussion slide, uh, I wanted to keep the following aspects in mind. First and foremost, learning is fun. If learning is not fun, then what's the point in doing it? And secondly, whenever you're attending any session, make sure that you're maintaining a customized notes, which will enhance your confidence and save your time just before your exam while you are revising. So with these objectives in mind, Let's go ahead with our case-based discussion without further delay. Yeah, case-based discussions made easy. The learning is fun. We'll start with this wonderful, inspiring quote. Be yourself, but always your better self. Often in this competitive world, we try to compare ourselves with others in the process, undermining our own capabilities. But each and every one of us have our own potential, and each and every one of us will achieve success in our own way. Be yourself, but always your better self. So are you a better version of yourself than yesterday? So if you focus on that, that you'll no longer feel any stress and you'll only enjoy the process of your journey. It can be personal as well as professional. So with this inspiring quote, let's go ahead with our discussion. So this is the context you have this, uh, for this final session of the week. A mother brings her five-year-old son to a clinic with a chief complaint of pain in his lower right back tooth region. After clinical and radiographic examination, pulpectomy was planned in relation to 8-4. Access opening was performed under local anesthesia and pulp was extirpated followed by biomechanical preparation. After a couple of days, patient was reported back with chest pain, acute dysphagia, vomiting, choking, drooling, and blood stained saliva. You preferred, I'm sorry, you referred the patient to physician. Of course, you preferred a physician's advice who suggested a chest radiograph. So what do you think is happening here? So you have the key areas highlighted in red. Those are the hints which will enable you answer this question. As I said, case-based MCQ or case-based question. In fact, it's easy to answer than a direct or straightforward question because you can find several hints. But the only challenge is with respect to time management. So with practice, you will eventually master answering these questions with speed and accuracy. Yeah, a very good evening, all of you. Hi. Yeah, so you have seen these keywords, right? You have seen that after performing uh, pulpectomy and redonic treatment, patient reported back with chest pain, acute dysphagia, vomiting, choking, drooling, and blood stain saliva. You refer the patient to a physician who suggested a chest radiograph, which is as follows. So as you can see, there seems to be some radio opacity, which has been highlighted in this chest radiograph, a posterior anterior chest radiograph, PA view. So this is the information we have related to this particular case or context. So with this background information, what do you think is the probable cause for patients' late symptoms? So you have exaggerated endodontic infection or is it because of accidental aspiration of instrument or is it because of accidental ingestion of instrument or is it none of the above? So which one do you think is the most probable cause for patients' late symptoms? So try answering this question. Let's get back to the context once again. So as you can see, an apprehensive mother brings her son to a clinic with tooth pain. You perform root canal treatment. 
endodontic treatment and patient reports back after a couple of days with chest pain, dysphagia, vomiting, choking, drooling and blood stained saliva. You, you refer the patient to physician who advised the chest radiograph which has the following presentation. So as you can see, you can find some radio opaque material which is highlighted in this particular PA view chest radiograph of this five-year-old kid. So what do you think is the most probable cause for these patients' late symptoms? Is it exaggerated anodonic infection or is it accidental aspiration of instrument or accidental ingestion of instrument, none of the above? And before you guys answer this question, I see many of you are choosing uh, option B or option C, Sidra, yeah. Observe this chest radiograph carefully once again. You can see that this radiopaque material is below the level of diaphragm, almost at the level of L2 and L3. Would you still call it as aspiration or could that be ingestion or could that be something else? So I'm going to give you a second chance. <laughs> okay. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer after observing that chest radiograph? Exactly. Very good. So as majority of you, even though initially most of you have uh, tilted towards option B, aspiration of instrument, it will be seen at upper GI level or in the upper areas of your chest radiograph, mostly in these areas. Okay, yeah, but here the location is almost at the level of L2 and L3. And most importantly, look at the late symptoms which the patient had. Chest pain, acute dysphagia, vomiting, choking, drooling, blood stain, saliva related to GI obstruction, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll get back to aspiration a bit later, don't worry, okay? So as majority of you upon second chance have rightly chosen, it is option C, uh, right? So do award yourself plus four, accidental ingestion of instrument. So as you can clearly see in this particular radiograph, again, the reputation is the same, post anterior chest radiograph demonstrating presence of a sharp foreign object at the level of L2, L3, just below the shadow of the diaphragm in this area. Yeah, option C is right answer. Now let's move on to the next question. Before you guys answer this question, let me give you some inputs about a rubber dam. First of all, rubber dam, application of rubber dam in dentistry was credited to SC Barnum, as majority of you already know, way back in 1864. Some 100 years ago, more than 150 years ago, S.C. Barnum. And you know what he said, and I quote, as mentioned in Grossman, the most time consuming thing about rubber dam is the amount of time required to convince a dentist to use it. Unfortunately, in modern day practice, in most of the private sectors, in our community or in our country, we don't see dentists actively using rubber dam, especially for anodontic procedures or even for various other dental procedures. Majority of them, unfortunately, because they think it's difficult, it's stressful, it's inconvenient, so we get all this multitude of reasons. But studies have shown that through practice, the rubber dam can be applied. And as minority of you have been choosing, so what do you think is the right answer for this question? Rubber dam can be applied in one to two minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, more than 45 minutes. Depends on mood of the operator. What do you think? So if you are right, see, majority of you seem to be choosing option B. If it were 10 to 15 minutes, it would definitely be considered as time taking. But uh, even in our post-graduation clinical practice, and you can inquire with your seniors, juniors, or anyone who is using rubber dam, it hardly takes a couple of minutes or even less than a minute. According to standard reference like Grossman, it takes less than a minute or up to two minutes. So one to two minutes is the right answer. 
But because of inexperience, yes, initially it might be time taking. Initially, we I used to take some five minutes or even more. But with practice, with expert tires, it will be less than a minute, right? So it's not time taking, which means as S. C. Barnum rightly mentioned, and I quote: "The most time consuming thing about rubber dam application is the time required to convince a dentist to use a rubber dam, which is very very unfortunate." And yes, maybe one in million cases we come across uh, such contexts or cases. But what if you face this situation in your clinical practice? Prevention is always better than cure, don't you think? So especially in these situations, we should exercise all care and of course use rubber dam for all possible procedures without any second thought. So option A is right answer. Do award yourself. Plus four. Now let's move on to the next question. Symptoms of foreign body aspiration include. So some of you have chosen option B for the first question. So let's see how many of you are going to answer it right. What if there is aspiration? Wheezing, coughing, dyspnea, all of the above. So which one do you think is a more appropriate answer? Symptoms of foreign body aspiration include, as you know, ingestion is once the root of entry is through GI, we consider that as ingestion. If it is respiratory tract, then we consider that as aspiration, right? So symptoms of foreign body aspiration include wheezing, coughing, dyspnea, all of the above. So which one do you think is a more appropriate answer? In the meantime, let me give you some inputs about these ingestions and aspirations. Ingestion of dental objects is more common than aspiration. Whenever a dentist loses a dental instrument, dental materials or any other foreign object inside the oral cavity, if a dentist loses them, he must consult a radiologist, even if the patient has no complaints. Physician, a radiologist without any delay. According to Hodges, Mentally and physically handicapped children are more prone to ingestion or aspiration of dental instruments than other populations. In, <coughs> I'm sorry, in any event, they recommended that dental practitioners examine their instrument before use as a safeguard against slippage uh, or breakage. Treatment with any endodontic device requires the use of rubber dam. This is the golden rule. Surprisingly, in a survey by Whitworth et al., very few, that is less than 20% of the surveyed dentists were using rubber dam routinely, while the vast majority of them, around 60%, have reported never to use rubber dam while performing anodontic procedures. There are many possible symptoms of foreign body injection, such as chest pain, acute dysphagia, vomiting, choking, drooling, bloodstain, saliva, as we mentioned in the context. The respiratory symptoms include, as majority of you have rightly chosen, all of the above, wheezing, coughing, dyspnea, which may suggest that the foreign object has been lodged in upper GI or respiratory tract. 90% of ingested dental instrument passes out of body through gastrointestinal tract, around 90%. Anodontic files, which are used for root canal cleaning procedure, have been reported to pass through the GI system within three days or 72 hours, but 10% require endoscopic removal and only 1% will require surgical interventions. And interestingly, patients with stomach or small intestine foreign bodies of width less than 2 cm or length less than 6 cm can be discharged home with instructions on symptoms that should prompt their reattendance. If foreign object found to be lodged in upper respiratory tract, bronchoscopy is mandatory. So this is some literature review from a PubMed index article. We'll share the link in your uh, e-classes. So symptoms of foreign body aspiration include wheezing, coughing, dyspnea, all of the above. And symptoms of foreign body ingestion include, as you have seen in the context, choking, vomiting, drooling, blood stain, saliva, acute dysphagia, etc. I hope it's clear. Very good. Now let's move on to the penultimate question. For the sharp objects like anodontic file, 
when lodged in gastrointestinal tract or respiratory tract, the management protocol is endoscopic retrieval of bronchoscopy, option A, careful monitoring with periodic radiographs, option B, laparotomy, option C, option D, all of the above. So which one do you think is a more appropriate answer? What is the management protocol? This is very important in a dental perspective, right? So how do you manage such a situation if there is either ingestion or aspiration? Would you go for bronchoscopy or endoscopic retrieval or careful monitoring with periodic radiographs or would you go for surgical incision abdominal cavity that is laparotomy or all of the above? So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? Would you say all of the above? Okay, let me give you some literature uh, regarding to this. The, for sharp objects like anodontic file, when lodged in GI or respiratory tract, the management protocol is endoscopic retrieval or bronchoscopy or careful monitoring with periodic radiographs should be undertaken for at least 24 to 48 hours. If the object, let me repeat, if the object fails to progress through the tract, after three days or 72 hours, or signs of bleeding, like perforation, obstruction, or notice, laparotomy should be carried out immediately. Yeah. Options A and B are more appropriate. If in case none of them work, right? So you can either go for endoscopic retrieval or bronchoscopy or careful monitoring with periodic radiographs. If still the situation doesn't improve in that case then you can go with a laparotomy so if you have chosen all of the above you can consider that as right answer as well because in the management protocol you have option a or b if both of them fail then you go with option c so a b and c all of them are true right so you can go with all of the above so we'll post a key correction after uh, this live session concludes in the description part of the video. So A, B, and C, but immediately, it can be endoscopic retrieval, bronchoscopy, or careful monitoring periodic radiographs. After some to us, if the object fails to progress through the GI tract or respiratory tract, respiratory tract, you have to go for bronchoscopy, but GI tract, if it fails to progress, then laparotomy should be carried out immediately, right? So you can go with all of the above. So if you have chosen either A, B, C, or D, do award yourself plus four, okay? I hope it's clear. Now, let's move on to the final question, the ultimate question of this session. Statement one and statement two. So statement one, you have the following information. All the endodontic procedures should be strictly be carried out under rubber dam isolation if hand files are used. See, we have rotary files and hand files, right? So if hand files are used, the flaws should be tied to the handle of the files with the length of 18 inches or more for easy retrieval of instrument. Statement two, dentists should always work in wet environment rather than in dry conditions to minimize chances of slippage of the instrument. So which one do you think is a more appropriate answer? Both statements true or false, or is statement one true, statement two false, and vice versa. So which one do you think is a more appropriate answer? Yeah, so all endodontic procedures should be strictly be carried out under rubber dam isolation. And if you're planning to use hand files, if you observe the handle of a hand file, you'll have a slot or an orifice to allow you to pass a floss and tie it or secure it, right? So if hand files are used, the flaw should be tied to the handle of the files with length of 18 inches or more for easy retrieval. So what do you guys think? Dan Danish, Sidra, Payal, Shubangi, Sana, Rakesh, Payal, Tu, Kishore, Saurabh, Rishikesh, Rashmi, Sai Rajat, almost every one of you are choosing option A, which I'm really surprised. Smriti, very good. Option A is right answer. So statement one is true, but statement two is false. Then they should work in dry environment, and that is one of the objectives of rubber dam isolation, to have that seamless flow of work through creating this dry environment. Isolation, rubber dam isolation, isolation from saliva, right? 
better visualization in the process. So dentists should always work in dry environment rather than in wet environment to minimize chances of slippage of instrument. So let me just add up the correction right now itself. We'll just place it here, all of the above. So as per management protocol, right? All of the above is right answer. Yeah, dry environment is the one which is preferred. So those who have clinical expertise will clearly understand what I'm talking about. If you are in first year, second year, third period, you'll, you'll understand the time, don't worry. So option one or option A is right answer. So what's the maximum score? Or what's the minimum score for this session? Uh, let me know. So drop your scores out of 20, let's see. And before you uh, drop your scores in the comment section, I want you to check out this particular image and identify the numbers, identify the instruments based on numbers. So what is one extreme left, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have seven parts of this rubber dam kit, right? These are seven components of your rubber dam kit. So try identifying as many as possible, as many as possible. So what is one? Kishore got 20 upon 20, Madhuri 20 upon 20. Very good. Congratulations, well done. Hi Lalita, yes, it is for all dental entrance related exams, the sessions which we are undertaking. Preeti, 20 upon 20, you did it. As I said yesterday, that's wonderful, Preeti. That's really good to hear. Pile 16, pile to 20. Okay. Yeah, so guys, try identifying as many instruments as possible and consider this very, very important because one of the instruments or one of the components was asked several times in previous entrances. So I try identifying as many instruments as possible in this rubber dam kit. I've given you the hint, I've identified the entire kit as dental dam or rubber dam kit. Sai Rajat 15, very good. So what is one? You can see it's like a forcep, right? So what do you think it's used for? So I'll give you exactly uh, 30 seconds. So try identifying as many as possible. Rashmi 15, very good. Lalita Gupta 1, oh, you're, you're identifying the instruments. Okay, let's wait and see. So accidental ingestion or aspiration rental instruments is a potential life-threatening complication and prevention is always better than cure. So this is the basis on which we have been having this entire discussion. If you use this equipment, right? In fact, there is one article published in Nature so, uh, about use of rubber dam in children. And even though we assume that using rubber dam in children is very stressful, studies have shown that using rubber dam in children is less stressful for both child and the dentist because of this prevention of unwanted complications. Isn't it? Four is not visible. If the, if the name is visible, then what's the fun in identifying it? <laughs> okay, let me give you the... A name, uh, it's called widgets. Uh, it, this picture is from Grossman, W-E-D-J-E-T-S, widgets. Okay, so it's widgets. It's made of natural latex. So what is that? Yeah, you can consider that, but uh, you know, it's not flaws. It's not dental flaws. In fact, you can see the flaws right here. So this is your flaws. Very good. So majority of you are answering this, identifying the instruments correctly. So let me give you a summary. So this is rubber dam punch for punching holes here, okay? So this is rubber dam punch one and two rubber dam clamps, you know, to place them on four point contact on tooth or teeth. And this is your rubber dam clamp holding four set and rubber dam clamp. And you can see how we tied it flaws in order to prevent slippage. Again, these are widgets used for reinforcing material used in place of or as a replacement for clamps. And 
5 is rubber dam template. You can see 6 into 6 inches dam template. So answer leaked. So 6 is your plastic frame, Nagadaspi, or metal frame, Young's frame. So this is rubber dam frame, and this is your rubber dam sheet material. Yeah, very good. No, the, the, I uh, see. We can assume that this is a lubricant, but uh, I'm sorry, this is not a lubricant. And anyways, it's not significant. Uh, this is from Grossman's. I just uh, posted the image, right? So let me uh, highlight that fourth one. So this is what I was talking about: widgets, dental dam stabilizing cord. Yeah. Also, we can have lubricating material, right? Water based. So let's keep that aside. So these are widgets. Uh, you need not worry about the length and so on and so forth but just focus on this dental dam stabilizing cord as you can see here it can be used in place of clamp or as a replacement for clamp for stabilizing the rubber dam so dental dam stabilizing cord just keep that in mind okay the fourth one so these are some of the homework questions for today for this uh, week uh, weekend right so what is split dam technique in fact i think we discussed the same in one of the previous slide sessions you can check it out uh, just refer standard literature and get back to mail for key what is split dam technique what are opter dam and insti dam and three what is canal projection technique consider this very very important Try finding out from standard references. Get back through mail for key and analysis from our side. We'll guide you accordingly. So this concludes our case based discussion made in the sessions. For this week, at least. Yeah, six out of seven, uh, seven five out of seven, that's good. Anyways. I hope it's clear. So I just wanted to highlight this particular case. And if you have any queries, you need any further assistance, always feel free to get back through mail 24 by 7. Also, as you can see, we have Mission 12 batch coming up and uh, we'll be launching the same this Sunday. We'll be coming up with a new video. Also, we have a new batch uh, towards NEET MDS 2022 crash course. And this is your retrograde schedule, which I was talking about. So you can use it, especially in the final days of your preparation. This is a regular compliance report to monitor your preparation on daily basis, weekly basis, including monthly basis, right? So we initiated this case-based discussions made in the sessions almost uh, three weeks ago. This is our fourth week. This is, uh, in fact, we concluded our fourth week as well. So we'll try continuing with these case-based discussions along with MS-based discussions the coming week as well. And I'll see you again on Monday at 9.30 p.m. in Standard Time. We'll come up with an update, right? So I wish you all the best, love you all. And as we have been discussing initially, I mentioned about a particular quote today. Be yourself, but always be your better self, right? So, uh, I know it's, uh, it's, it's really about conditioning, the way in which we have been conditioned right from the beginning. We have been conditioned uh, in such a way that we always constantly compare ourselves with others. So, which is very unfortunate because that way of comparison is at a very low level when it comes to appreciating life. And once we resort to such kind of comparisons, that is comparison itself with others, it only means that we're undermining our own potential, our own self. We should understand that if we carefully observe without judgments, each and every one of us is unique and special in their own way. But this is a bad marketing strategy. A good marketing strategy would be to say that get first rank, then that is success. That would be the best marketing strategy to make more money, but it only means that you're being fooled. We're all being fooled. In fact, we have been fooled a number of times previously uh, during our intermediate, uh, all these corporate colleges, coaching academies. Get rank one, life is settled. That's a nonsensical approach. So whether you get rank one or rank 25,000, it doesn't matter as long as you believe in yourself. How do you survive in real world? Of course you can because each and every one of you as i said is unique and you have your own potential it's all about tapping into it so just observe you'll understand what i'm talking about and never resort to any kind of comparison with yourself with others which only undermines your own potential 
So you're unique and special in your own way. So with this, let's conclude our weekend live session and I'll see you again on Monday another live session and also before i conclude many of uh, many of you are worrying about postponement of free time exam i don't think it's going to happen just keep a tab on the official website we'll make an exclusive video on this because need pg 2021 has been postponed to may 21st 2022 we'll get back with an analysis video and you don't worry about anything else right so just keep working keep giving your best and as i keep on reminding it's all about working hard, working consistently, and most importantly, believing in yourself. Good night. Take care. Sidra, if you split the beans, then I'm going to collect those beans and throw at you. Okay, so don't split the beans. <laughs> Lalita, what about medical subjects, sir? How to conduct that? Lalita, you can get back through mail at proud to be in gmail.com. You'll you can find out the details of all our courses, including the schedule, right? Yeah. Okay, guys. Take care. Good night. Bye.